last video went a bit pear shaped with um, what I'm just about to do now. So my third tutorial, but um, I'm just going to quickly change the settings for Smalltron. So I didn't. I'm redoing this tutorial. Um, on the on the last tutorial, I missed a few things out which I should mention, but this is good anyway as a reminder for um, when things go wrong. Um, all your module files they can't have a PHP ending tag because you can only have one PHP ending tag in a PHP file. And we don't want the code cutting off inside the module, so just make sure that doesn't um, occur in any of the files you write for a module. Um, second bit is make sure all functions have parentheses. I forgot that in the last tutorial for these. So ignore that. So, you can see I've experimented with installing it. The module I'm working on from the last tutorial. Um, and it in installs and uninstalls fine, and you'll notice the origi it originally has delete link before it's installed. And when you install it, it now has three links disable, reset, and delete. Um, but now I'm going to show you how to add the fourth link for configure which takes you to a configuration page so to do that in your car module file you need to create a function called get content so public function get content and basically with this function we're going to be um, creating HTML to return out of this function which is going to be the HTML of our configuration page so automatically that configuration page has HTML but it acts as a container for the HTML you produce from this function so you can do any kind of variable you want but the most common thing is to just use this so your, um, your module class then a variable called underscore HTML equals and let's do a header so just I'm going to stick the display name in for this So we just need to make sure that we separate the HTML from the variables by putting the variables in speech marks and then the dots in between the speech um the gaps of the speech marks and the variables. So I've saved that and go back to the back office. And you see now I have a configuration link that we've added that function. And that's it's currently showing empty. Didn't mean to do that. But you can see it's actually added the configuration page now, even though there's nothing inside it. So I'll assume there's something wrong with the way I've wrote it. So I'll just put a normal bit of text in it rather than a variable. So this is a header. Reload.
Um, ah, apologize. I'm forgetting the main thing you're supposed to do, which is this function has to return the actual variable which is to call the HTML in. So in this case, the underscore HTML, or you won't get anything back whatsoever. And you'll just get that blank screen which you saw. So just simple mistake. Um, so if I reload now, you can see we get um, the tile, which I put in, the header tile. And we also get these two, like, block of links um, with the module and the module name, like the kind of coding name, you know, all underscore and all stuck together. And we also have these extra links for managing the module um, in the back office in certain places where, obviously, in the, in the configuration page, you don't actually configure everything because PressShop already has some um, specific pages to deal with certain settings so it's better to stick with them so it gives you these options um, and PressShop's already add, added styling automatically to this heading so it's made it blue and to the left so now we're gonna add another function for cause configuration pages are for forms so we get we edit and change information to affect a module so most modules in press shop use a function um, name called display underscore display form and include this in the get content function by just using this so just underscore just like that and then this did all the um, form HTML in this function and then they get that to return to well doesn't actually return, it just goes into this variable again. But instead of equaling, so telling that variable what to put in it, you're adding on top, or maybe removing HTML, so that would be the dot equal sign to add it onto the end of it. So I'll just show you an example. Um, most forms in Press Shop for the default styling are like little blocks of boxes. You get get the idea once I've wrote the HTML for that. Um, field set class equals just trying to remember field set class equals space it's important that you put a class as space make sure you including this HTML as part of the variable that you want to use to store all the HTML and that's continuing on not deleting existing HTML so like that a label so obviously a label for a form field so Let's just a let's put something simple like a label, and then input type equals submit. And then this one, you have to put another class spe specific to press shop. 
which is button. Close it off. And if we just save this now, reload. See, now we've now got a little box with a label for an element and a submit button. And the label itself isn't, hasn't got any kind of style into press shop, but the button and the containing box, the field set, does. And you can duplicate this as many times as you want, have as many fields as you want. And they will all have their um, CSS applied. So they'll all look like they fit into the back office theme, whichever theme you've picked. So they, they've all got equal space and fit nicely with. The layout, the layout of the module configuration page. Um, just gonna reference something I wrote down. Ah, legend. Now this is something extra. I'll just delete those last two bits. Duplicate. With these boxes, there's um an overlapping tab you can put on the top of them with the legend element and by the common style for press shop modules is to use a image so see I've, I'll just like to google for this one so google logo And then next item image you can have some text. Save. So now you can see ooh. Right, just make sure you put legend as the first child element of field set. Because you don't want any other elements before it. Our little cards will just happen then. Ah. It's definitely right. This probably just cost the image is too big, but you see the basic effect of what you get. Ah, sorted itself out for some reason. Um you see you just get this like tab that's positioned along this line, so it's kind of in the middle of the top line with an image and some text. And this is the basic style you see in a lot of modules. Um, with several of these boxes with the tab at the top and then all the input um, form elements inside this box for certain parts. So for the PDF customizer I might have different boxes for different PDF templates. Well, PDF template purposes like one for invoices, one for deliveries and one for accounting. So I can, I can edit this the look of PDFs for that certain purpose in one box and another and etc etc and if we just go back into the other modules you can see this you know most modules follow this method like you can see this has two boxes and then elements inside and if you're if there's a certain bit of HTML you want similar to a module you can just um, use any either Safari, Firefox, Chrome, Opera just click on right click inspect element and you can find out exactly what element it is and any class or ID it uses to um, use press shops 
default CSS for arranging some back office stuff. So at the minute that just covers the basic. So just go back to the my module specifically. So that just kind of covers any input elements and the submit button. So you can just kind of put them one after another inside the field set, just as long as legends first. And you should be fine from there, just putting all your HTML in the display form and any extra HTML that's not part of the form inside the get content. And I'll show some more specific HTML in future when it gets more advanced. But that's all you need for now, really, just to plan out. And that's it, really. And in the next tutorial, I'll just cover images. So that's it for now.